Hey everyone, Riley here. I've got a special surprise for you today, but rather than spoil it, why don't you just watch? If you're paying attention, you may have noticed that classic controller text, which would imply I'm playing on the Wii Virtual Console. Just keep that in the back of your mind. So how about that? 
This is the first Sonic time-based credits work on the Wii Virtual Console version of Majora's Mask. Um, I couldn't have done this alone. Um, this was definitely a group effort. Um, Turkenheimer discovered that there's a way to save your coordinates between scenes with Sonic Double Time. It only works on the English version of the game, which by no coincidence is the reason I'm playing on the English version. Um, but essentially, when they added the fact that the English Son Sonic Double Time reloads the scene, um, they saved a copy of those coordinates in a place that doesn't get overwritten by scene changes. Um, so I can do that position setup I did in Terminal Field and then go into Observatory and still have those coordinates saved. And, well, here's the credits. I'm not going to play through all of them because this is actually meant to be a tutorial video. Um, but I wanted to demonstrate it working on vanilla first. But rest assured, they do play through to completion, and I will link a video of that happening, um, of a video that Genesis took in the description. So anyway, let's get on to the actual tutorial part here. So for the tutorial, I'm going to be using the Majora's Mask practice ROM, which is called KZ. Um, KZ is basically, if you're familiar with Ocarina of Time, it's sort of like GZ, but for MM. Um, it has save states, and it has memory watches, and you can even view memory. So that's going to be pretty helpful in explaining what's going on here. Now, there is one more thing I want to mention, and that's that this credits warp does not work on Dolphin. And I will be doing a whole section of this video explaining why it doesn't work on Dolphin. Um, but I'll include a timestamp so you can skip over it, because it's a pretty technical description. Um, maybe I will send this video to the Dolphin developers and see if they can fix the bug, as it were. Um, but anyway, so to start, you're going to come into... Well, first, make sure you have Bomb Back. Get Bomb Back in first cycle. Pretty easy thing to remember for the first 22 minutes of the game. Um, so then you're going to target this wall literally anywhere, except don't do it too far in this corner. Um, so, like, any anywhere in here is fine. Um, turn backwards and do two rolls. You can mash the A button for the rolls. Um, you don't have to, but you can, and it doesn't affect your position at all. So you might as well just to be a little bit faster. And then turn back, and then we're going to do five vertical slashes. Again, you can mash these as long as you don't get a triple slash. So just space them just enough to where you're not going to get a triple slash, and then you'll be fine. If you notice there, I did two fast ones and then a slow one. That's one way to avoid a triple slash, because you need three fast ones in a row to get a triple slash. Um, and then you're going to do an untargeted shield slash, which is where you just press B and then immediately hold shield. Turn right, do it again. Okay, then walk forward until you're up against this wall. Then you're going to back walk until... This frame. Um, now the visual cue I use for this, it's a little bit hard to tell um, with the pause menu up. So give me a sec here. Okay, now it's a little bit easier to see. If you look at the blue A button, you can just see the tiniest sliver of sky between it and the brown um, wall, I guess. That's the visual cue I use. It's just that first frame I can see a tiny sliver of sky. And I'm going to keep holding target, but I'm going to let go of back on the stick. Okay, so now that I'm here, um, this is what I like to think of as the first home base of this position setup. It sort of helps me mentally break down the order or the things that I need to do. Um, and. Just to clarify, this position setup was found by Turkenheimer, and he did it in a different order. I've switched the order a little bit. It doesn't change the setup at all, but it just makes it a little bit easier to remember, and also a little bit faster, because it minimizes the number of times you need to put sword away. Um, so anyway, once you're in this first home base position, you're going to do essentially um, something in each cardinal direction. So in the direction you start facing, you're going to do three shield scoots. One, two, three. Now you're going to do three shield scoots left. One. Oops, I totally messed that up. 
This is fine though, because I have KSE, so I can load a save state. Um, which one was it? Was it... I think it's one. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is my home base position again. So, three shields gets forward. Two, three. Three to the left. One, two, three. Okay, and then turn down. Put away your sword before you target, because you notice from doing the shield scoots, the put away timer already starts, so your A button should already say put away now. So put away sword, and then do three rolls. And then turn left, and then do four rolls. And again, you can mash A, and it's not going to change your position at all, so you might as well just to be fast. Um... Okay, so now that we've done something in each cardinal direction, this is what I like to think of as the second home base. So now that you're in the second home base, what you're going to do is um, three vertical slashes, an untargeted horizontal slash, and then you're going to try to do one ESS left, which is a little bit hard to do on DC. Okay, yeah, I messed it up. But that's fine, because I do have a same state. Um, I think it's this one. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so three vertical slashes. One neutral horizontal slash. One ESS left. There we go. And then you're going to do... Um, you don't have to retarget there, that was just muscle memory. You're going to do one shield slash. And then you're going to do one diagonal slash, which is where you tap right and press B really quick succession. Like that. Okay, now your coordinates, your Y and Z coordinates are perfect. And all you need to do is adjust your angle. Your angle needs to have 5-3 in the first bite. The second bite can be whatever it wants. So since the second bite can be whatever it wants, we can actually just kind of YOLO this with CF. Um, the visual cue I use is... I try to get the, the third part. Um, I try to get the vertical line of the pillar between the middle of that and the right side of it. I um, mean, you can see that gives me five, three, six, eight. That's like right in the middle of the range. You're totally fine there. Um, now, if you're uncomfortable with that, there is an alternative you can do. There's actually a couple alternatives, but my, the alternative that I like the best. Oh, whoops. Let me. Um, Let me switch states here. There we go. All right. Um, that's not the one I wanted. This is the one I wanted. Okay. So my position's correct. Um, so if you don't want to do the C up setup, what you can do is you can just do two ESS left to five five there, where your angle is five five. And then you can still see up, but this time you can buffer one C up to the right. Okay. And then as you're unpausing here, start holding target and unpause lag to buffer a target press. As you can see, me holding target there has my facing angle at 5-3 EC, which is exactly what we want. If I didn't hold target, it would have gone too far to the right. So now you can just mash Ocarina. And we're going to play Sauna Double Time. Now what Sauna Double Time does is it saves our coordinates because Sauna Double Time reloads the scene on the English version of the game. Um, so in order to spawn you back at the same place, it needs to have a copy of your coordinates somewhere that persists between scene loads. And that's the key feature we're exploiting here. So now we have our position and... Um, do I want to explain this now or afterwards? I'll do it afterwards. I wanted to do an, a technical explanation of what's actually happening, but I think I will do it after I finish the tutorial part. So now you're just going to want to grab some bombs. Uh, you only need one drop, and I got a drop on my first try, so that's pretty cool. I do have cheats on, so it doesn't really matter for me, but... Yeah, you only need one drop. You're going to use all five bombs. Um, so the first one, you're going to do a recoil flip here. Um... For that recoil flip, you just want to do a shield turn down left, 
um, drop the bomb so that it's... Drop the bomb early, because if you have the bomb... If you drop the bomb right before the flip, you're going to clip out of bounds. So drop the bomb early, do a recoil flip backwards, and immediately switch to holding right, and you'll clip through every time, no problems. The holding right really makes it a lot more consistent. Okay, so now that you're in Observatory, you're going to break those three pots, get their drops. And then you're going to go into Hideout, drop the bomb. And then gonna go back into hideout again, and then back into observatory. And then you're gonna break these two pots, drop two bombs, and then come in here. And then come back up. And now we're gonna do the super slide. So just target this wall, get inverted cam to the right. You can also get inverted cam in another direction if you prefer, but this is just sort of what I like to do. Um, it's the old setup for chest SRM, basically. Okay, um, line links head up to where the front of his hair is either touching or just barely over that black vertical bar texture on the wall. So, like, right here is perfect. Drop a bomb, get in front of the spot, get a super slide, let go of target. Okay, now, now you have your invisible thought. So now we're going to come back into observatory. Try to get a diagonal angle like this, because it's going to make this part a little easier. So what we need to do here is we need to target this invisible wall that's sort of between this crate on Link's right and this corner of the Scarecrow platform on Link's left. So what you want to do is you want to get like sort of right in between those, let go of target, and walk directly into it to where Link isn't really changing position at all. Like that. Then target and you'll get 8207. The reason we do this backwards is because if you're facing forwards, Tattle's going to aggro on that silly cuckoo there and it's going to mess you up. So if you have your camera facing the other way, Tattle won't bother you. Um, so now that we have 8207, we're just going to get away from the cuckoo and then we're going to do two ESS right. Okay. And then we're going to... Oops, I messed it up. So it, it, if you mess up like that, um, again, just face kind of diagonally so that the camera is off the cuckoo. Try to stand sort of between this box and the scarecrow platform and then walk until you're not really changing position. And that gives you 8207. So do two to the right and then ESS all the way down until you get F3, FD, and then you're gonna ESS left. until three three four five this angle right here the visual cue i use for this is this is the last frame where you can't see the gold pattern on the front of link's sash so if i go one frame too far you can just barely see that little sliver of gold on the very left or front rather of link's sash so i need to go one back the other way okay and then you're just gonna get to where a hideout is loaded. You don't have to unload observatory. This is fine. As soon as you hear the crackling sounds of the flames in the hideout, you're fine. Get rid of that pot and play song attack. And there you have it. It's the credits. So this is this is very similar to the credits work we do on N64, um, as far as like how it works. We're changing Termina Field to be the cutscene now. Um, which, or wait, no, sorry, other way around. We're changing the cutscene map to be Termina Field, but we have to do it a little bit differently, because on N64, um, since we can do arbitrary code execution, we're just writing the word for Termina Field into Link's current entrance, every single frame. On Wii, we can't do that because we can't do arbitrary code execution. So instead, what we do is we change the entrance table to, for two, well, it actually ends up being four, but for the two entries we care about of the cutscene map in the entrance table, we change those two entries to be Termina Field. Now, you may have the question of how do you change two entries with only one light node SRM? And this is where this is gonna get technical. So let me load a state here. I'm going to load the state right before um, right before I do this thing, so that way we can just take a look at what's going on in memory. 
So to start, what I want to show you is Link's coordinates. Um, so this extra pair of Link's coordinates is at 801F33, um, I think 40, but I'll just do 3300 just so you can see everything. So this pair of Link's coordinates resets when you load a new scene. Um, this is where I would respawn if I void it out. But if you can see down here, this pair of Link's coordinates is what I originally did that setup in Terminate Field for. Now let's take a look at what these coordinates actually are, because this is pretty important. So this X coordinate, I don't care about at all. This um, Y coordinate here, I care about the last three bytes. So what are the last three bytes? E0, 2D, 0, 0. Let me explain this. So E0 is a byte that represents a memory domain. Um, so on the Wii Virtual Console, we can use a couple different bytes here that all work, but most bytes will crash. So 8, 0 is the memory domain for the emulated N64. Um, that corresponds to cached RDRAM. Now, uh, RDRAM is just the RAM of the N64, but it's it, it's called RAM bus, which is a brand name, and then dynamic random access memory. So it's RDRAM. That's a pretty common term in the N64 community. Um, but anyway, so 80 is on or sorry, is cached RDRAM, and then A0, the letter A, is uncached RDRAM. So H0 and A0 both work. Now, this is where it gets interesting because we can actually use the um, memory domains for the Wii as well. So C0 is the memory domain for uncached um, mem1 on the Wii. So the Wii has two memory banks, memory1 and memory2, called mem1 and mem2. Um, MEM1 is 24 megabytes of fast 1T SRAM, and MEM2 is 64 megabytes of GDDR3 RAM, I believe. Um, so this is in the the game, the, the game's emulated RAM, the N64 emulated RAM, that is in the fast Wii memory, which is MEM1. It's smaller, but faster. And the for the uncached version of that, the memory domain is C0. E0 also works, and I'm not 100% sure what that corresponds to. I think it might be... Actually, I don't really know what E0 corresponds to. Um, you know what it could be, though? Is on the N64, E0 corresponds to um, the... What's it called? The TLB, the Translation Look Aside Buffer. And I know that Paper Mario uses E0 memory addresses. And this game on Wii Virtual Console was released after Paper Mario was. So it's possible they just built in E0 to the emulator um, as an option, as a valid option. So anyway, um, 8-0, A-0, C-0, and E-0 all work. Now, here's the interesting thing, is that C-0 and E-0 behave differently on console than they do on Dolphin. Um, when on console, what happens is if you're using C0 or E0, it's a, it's a little weird to explain, but if it's C0 or E0 and you're doing an unaligned write in such a way that it crosses a double word boundary, then it ends up duplicating that write either two or four times. If it's a double word boundary, it's four times. If it's a single word boundary, it's only two times. And what I believe is happening here is that this is a hardware feature of PowerPC, which is the instruction set architecture of the GameCube, Wii, and Wii U CPUs. Um, an interesting thing about PowerPC is that it supports unaligned reads and writes, which is not common in RISC architectures. Um, but the implementation details of this are obscure. Even if you read the Wii CPU manual, um, all it says is that unaligned reads and writes suffer a performance penalty, but it doesn't explain how they're implemented in hardware. And what I believe is happening here is that the way they're implemented in hardware is basically 
it does a shift on the data you're trying to write. So let's say I'm trying to write um, one byte to the right of a word boundary. So it'll shift my data one byte to the right, which is eight bits, and then it will sort of paste that data in the first word and also the word before it. And that, that way you get the word you want in the middle, but you also get some extra stuff written on the sides. So that was a lot to explain. So let me just sort of show that in action here. Um, so, well, actually, before I do that, let me finish explaining the coordinates. That was a long tangent. So yeah, E0 is the memory domain. 2D is the internal scene table value for term in a field. Um, 0, 0 just means I want to use spawn 0 of term in a field. 4, 3 over here is just bogus. Um, C0, again, that's the memory domain. 1C is... Well, actually, the next three I'm just going to read all together. 1C, 5, 5, and then 5, 3. That is an address, and that corresponds to the entrance table. So let's take a look at what's in the entrance table. So 801C, 5, 5. Um, let's just do 4, 0. Okay. So this is the entrance table. And in particular, what we're looking at is we're looking at the cutscene map. So the entrance table for the cutscene map, um, these are pointers to various spawns within the cutscene map. We don't really care about those. We just care about the actual entrance records. And these are the entrance records. And the one we're changing, again, remember, it was 801C5553. Um, so that would be this one. But... For details specific to how Lightnode SRM works, which I'll explain in the future, in the, later in this video, um, we actually go four bytes to the right. So we're actually looking at this one. So, and we're on byte three. So we're actually writing to this last byte, which is E0. Um, and then we're writing E0, 2D, 0, 0, 4, 3. So, but, but if you look here, look at what happens. I have 2D0043E0 in four bytes. Again, I should have only had it in, I should have had three bytes on this word, and I should have had one byte on that word, and that's it. But that isn't what happens. What happens is it got pasted four times, and this is the behavior that Dolphin doesn't emulate correctly. It does not do this four paste thing when you cross a double word boundary. Now, the double word boundary I'm crossing is this. 801C5558 boundary. Um, that's a double word boundary. Anything ending in 0 or 8 is a double word boundary. And I'm crossing that boundary with this because I'm writing E0 on this word, last byte of that word, and then I'm writing 2D0043 on this word. So I'm straddling that double word boundary. And again, I believe what it is, is it's probably a hardware implementation of unaligned writes where it shifts it a certain number of bits and then it just pastes that in four spots. I don't know why it's four spots instead of two. And again, you do get two spots if you're only crossing a single word boundary. Like if I was crossing 5-4, then that would only be a single word boundary, and I'd only get a right here and a right here. But regardless, this is the behavior Dolphin doesn't emulate correctly. So what you end up seeing on Dolphin is you'll see E0. Here, let me, let me change this to bytes to make this a little clearer. So what you'll see is you'll see E0 in this byte, and then you'll see 2D0043 in this byte. However, um, this is not quite what you want. So what this ends up doing is it does end up warping you to the credits because this entry here is where the credits start. But immediately after you see Dawn of a New Day, it loads this entry. Let me switch to Word again. It'll load this entry in the entrance table. So this one needs to be changed to say 2D as well but it isn't changed on Dolphin, so what you end up seeing is you end up seeing the Goron Lullaby cutscene. And let me go ahead and demonstrate that here. So if I just hack my stored coordinates to be um, a slightly different... Uh, shoot, that will work. Okay, so these are my stored coordinates. Now remember how I said this double word and quad word write behavior? This is what we called in the MM community. It's double word write and quad word write. Um, this only happens when we're using C0 or E0 memory domain. So if I switch this to 80 or A0, it won't happen. Um, 
So I switch this to be an 8. So that's my saved coordinates. And then I return to the game here. And I come over here, I drop this pot, and I place on a time. So I get the credits, which is good. Let's just watch through the first, like, 30 seconds of this so that I can show you what I'm talking about. Oh, actually, one sec. Um, since I've already written to this on the save file, I need to change something. Uh... Actually, one sec. Uh, okay. I need to change something here, which is before I demonstrate that, which is that I need to hack. Um, so I need to hack this coordinate again. So I'm going to hack this to be eight zero again. But I also need to change the entrance table back to how it used to be. One C five five. Five, five, three, eight, that'll be fine. Or, yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, so what I need to do is let me just change this all back to how it used to be. So these are all F8s. F8. Uh, as you can see by the surrounding um, words, F8 is the internal scene value for um, the cutscene map. So I'm just going to change these all to F8s. The last half word, fortunately, doesn't matter, so that can be whatever. So, okay, those are all F8 now. So now... I'm going to... drop this pot. Okay. Place on a time. And while I'm doing that, let's watch this memory. So, remember... When I'm doing C0 on hardware, I get four words written. But on Dolphin, I only get the single word written. This is still hardware, but I'm just demonstrating what happens on Dolphin on hardware just because it's easier with my streaming setup. So um, if you notice here, if I switch this to bytes, what I wrote was E0... 2D0043, and that only got written to one word. This happens on hardware with 8-0 and A-0 memory domain, but with C-0 and E-0 memory domain, it does a quad word right here. So it'll write to four words. This is the behavior Dolphin doesn't emulate correctly, and it has some pretty disastrous consequences. So, if I'm running any percents for Majora's Mask on Wii Virtual Console, technically the N64 version's probably slightly faster, but um, most people prefer to play on the Wii version. It's just a lot more playable. Um, so if I'm doing that. This is what happens. After I get to the start of the credits, I get the Goron Lullaby cutscene, which means the credits don't run to completion, which means this isn't a valid speedrun. So if this behavior could be fixed in Dolphin, it would be amazing. But I understand this is a very large task to undertake because it is not documented in the Dolphin CPU manual. I've read that CPU manual, it's not in there. So this is something that would require a lot of hardware testing or someone with insider knowledge of how the PowerPC architecture handles unaligned reads and writes, or rather unaligned loads and stores, I should say. <laughs> Be a little more assembly language with my programming, or assembly language with my speaking. Um, so yeah, these, these credits don't run to completion on Dolphin, and it doesn't run to completion on hardware with 8-0 and A-0, but it does with C-0 and E-0. Um, so just one more thing, let me explain briefly SRM and Lightnode SRM, because that's how we made this happen. So I've already explained the coordinates. Um, so let me load that state again. 
And we're just going to explain what light node SRM, SRM is. So first off, this is SRM. Um, I'm carrying something, but I'm not actually carrying anything. This is what SRM is. And basically what it is, is if we can somehow unload something while we're trying to pick it up, and then not pick it up until after it's unloaded, then Link thinks he's carrying that thing, but that thing is gone. So he's actually carrying nothing. Now, the thing about carrying stuff in this game, and pretty much any game, is that it's in some ways sort of an optical illusion. What happens is that um, Link, as he's carrying something around, Link's coordinates and angle are changing, and then Link updates the thing he's carrying to have its coordinates and angle also change. So this is true regardless of whether that thing is loaded or not. As I'm walking around here, the X, Y, and Z position and the angle of this nothing that I'm carrying is updating. And that's very powerful because it means that we can overwrite other memory. Um, so what we're, what we're trying to overwrite here this 3345, I've sort of already explained that, but that corresponds to an address of 801F3345, which is those coordinates. Um, now, let me go ahead and show what's happening here. So, I'm going to go into this hallway here to where I'm loading the observatory, or the, uh, the hideout. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, okay. I was just trying to get that up again. So I can use this actors menu, um, to find this torch here. Actually, no, I don't even need to find the torch. I know where the torch is because if you look at this watch at the bottom right of my screen, that is the pointer to the thing that Link thinks he's carrying, but he's actually not carrying anything. Um, so if we go to this address, 8042... Eight... A... Two... Zero... Okay. So let's... And then let me change this to be half word. Um... Oh wait, sorry. This is the address of the thing Link thinks he's carrying. Now, we're using the angle of it, which happens to be at offset 0x32. So if you notice this byte that I've, or this word, half word that I've highlighted here, this is Link's angle. See, as I change the angle, this changes. But the 801F stays the same. So combined with the 801F right before it, this is forming a pointer. So what is this pointer? So this is a pointer inside of a torch. And torches produce light. In this game, the way dynamic lighting sources are handled is that there is a doubly linked list of all dynamic lighting sources, and it's in this 801F region of memory. And if you don't know what a double linked list is, it's a basic computer science concept, but essentially what it is is it is a collection of things that are not necessarily stored in memory in the order they're supposed to be interpreted. So like, for instance, I can have, let's say this is an apple, this is an orange, and this is a, I don't know, a pear. Um, and let's say I want them to be in that order, apple, orange, pear. So if I was using an array in computer programming, I would just have them all in a row like this. But with a doubly linked list, what I can have is I can have, for instance, orange, pear, apple. But the apple's next pointer points to the orange, and then the orange's next pointer points to the pear, and likewise the pear's previous pointer points to the orange, and the orange's previous pointer points to the apple. So it's essentially just a very basic structure. It, it's just a node on top of the data that you're storing. And a node is just a pointer to the next entry and a pointer to the previous entry. So what this is a pointer to is it's a pointer to this torch's entry in the doubly linked list of dynamic lighting sources. Um, and 
Well, when the dynamic lighting source unloads, it has to remove itself from the list. So the way it does that is with the following two lines of code that I'm just going to say out loud, I guess. Um, it is node. Again, the node is sort of just the collection of next and previous pointers on that entry of the linked list. So it's node arrow next arrow prev equals node arrow prev and node arrow prev arrow next equals node arrow next. So the, all this is, is it's just removing itself from the linked list by taking the previous entry in the linked list and telling it to point over it, if that makes sense. Like if I have this apple orange pear example again, um, let's say I'm trying to remove the orange, boom, orange is gone. Now I just have apple and pear. But the apple and pear have to know that they're the only ones in the list. So the apple's next pointer needs to point to um, the orange's old next pointer. So the apple's next pointer now needs to point to the pear, and the pear's previous pointer now needs to point to the apple. And that's essentially what's happening there. Um, so anyway, as soon as we unload this torch, it's going to remove itself from this linked list. And again, it's just going to do those two lines of code. Now, since we've changed the address of this to be... Um, uh, one sec. Okay. So this is our actual angle. So since we've changed this address to be... 801F3345, it's going to look there instead. And again, this is just that saves copy of our coordinates, so I'll show it one more time. 80F or 80F3345. That'll be good enough. Okay. So 801F3345, that's here. And again, it's, it's an unaligned read and write here. So I'm going to switch it to bytes to make it a little bit clearer, but 801F3345 is um, is this? No, this. It's this byte, but because of the way that node.prev.next that node .prev .next and that node.next.prev works, essentially it ends up being plus one word, so plus four bytes from the address we put so it'll actually go here. So it'll be E0 2D0043. So the one we're looking at here, so this is the prev pointer, and this would be the next pointer here. So what we want is th the one we care about, there's two writes, but the one we care about is node arrow next arrow prev. So this is the node, this is the next pointer, and then we care about and then the previous of that so it'll be whatever this address is minus or plus four yeah it'll be plus four because it's node arrow next arrow prev and prev comes first so it'll be plus four um so this will actually be co1c5557 is what that corresponds to um and then that is going to be in that space is going to be written this value, which is E0 2D0043. Um, the E0 is going to be written to the last byte because this is a 57, remember? So this is going to be written to the 57 byte, and then this will be written to 58, 59, and then 5A here. Um, and again, on Dolphin, this just writes to just those bytes. But on the actual hardware, probably because of how PowerPC implements unaligned reads and writes, um, this will actually get duplicated four times, and we've already seen that behavior. But just to show it one more time, let's go to um, 801C55. 801C55, and then that'll be fine. Okay. So again... This is the write that happens on hardware if we do 8.0 or A0, and it happens on Dolphin regardless. It was just this E0, 2D0043. But as soon as I um, drop this and play Sauna Time, let me switch this to Word.
it will write to all four words. In particular, this word and this word are the two we care about, giving us a true credit score that actually goes to completion. So anyway, that was a very long-winded explanation. It probably didn't make a lot of sense to most of you, but that's why I'm gonna include a timestamp so you can just skip it. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If any Dolphin developers are looking at this, um, if you know what's happening well enough to be comfortable implementing it in Dolphin, that would be awesome. Most of what I mentioned that I think is happening is just conjecture from having studied you know, processor architectures and assembly language, but I don't know anything specifically about PowerPC. Um, so this is just a hypothesis. But if you can demonstrate via testing, or if there's somehow some documentation besides the CPU manual that mentions this, um, that would be awesome. Because then, you know, in Majora's Mask Community, we've recently reallowed emulator as long as you're lower than 15% of the world record. So people can't run this on emulator right now because of this behavior isn't implemented. <clears throat> so yeah, if you could if you could fix that, that'd be super cool. But again, I know it's a really tall ask because it isn't documented anywhere that I could find. Um, so it would require probably like decapping or a lot of hardware like measuring the voltages tests and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, this has been a combination tutorial and explanation for the latest uh, Wii Virtual Console credits work on the English version of the game. Um, and I'd like to thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye! Uh, hello?